Yo guys, what's up? This your boy John from ColdRash.com. I'm down here in North Carolina. I don't know if that's down. It's actually up from where I'm at. But we've got an exclusive interview, and the reason why it's exclusive is because you'll never see me and this guy on anybody else's interview other than a cold or ice interview. So right now, we're right here live with Mr. Scott Wingo, CEO of Channel Advisor here at Catalyst. You having a good time? I am. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm Thanks for this having fireside me. chat. The, the fire, yeah, the fire nice is nice and warm. warm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little cool still. So it's it's, nice yeah, to that's the right, the fire's on. <laughs> okay, let's let's just talk about just a couple of things that you spoke on yesterday in your keynote. Um, E-commerce growth and rebound from the you know economy that we were feeling. Or is it rebounding? How well is it rebounding? And you know, give me a little bit of insight on that. Yeah, during the recession, e-commerce was essentially flat, so zero growth. Um, which is actually pretty good because retail sales really plummeted. You saw all these brick-and-mortar retailers go out of business. Um, so here, now that we're out of the recession in 2011, we're seeing e-commerce grow anywhere from 10 to 15 percent in the U.S. And what's really interesting for a lot of our attendees at the conference is, is the global growth that's going on. We're seeing Europe really explode. Um, they had a worse recession from a retailer perspective, a brick-and-mortar or high street as they call it. Um, and so now online is really taking a lot of share there, specifically in the U.K. and France and Spain. Um, and then Asia is on fire. We, we have a, an office in Australia. I know you've been down to Australia. And that office is overrun with demand from China, Singapore, Hong Kong, um, South Korea, places like that. So e-commerce is in the U.S. is growing at 15%, which is great. Mm -hmm. But some of these international markets are, are growing as fast as 30%, 40%. Would you, um, uh, that's interesting. Would you kind of say that maybe the uh, economy aided in the expansion of e-commerce possibly? I think so. There, there's less options. So Circuit City mm -hmm. went out of business and here in Raleigh you really only have Best Buy and then you know you have Target and Walmart that don't have much selection for like electronics just use it as an example. So you know I think it's become you, maybe you would go to three retail stores and now I think you maybe go to one retail store and you look at all the online options. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so I think that you know some of the brick and mortar guys and the big box guys going out of business uh, even in categories like uh, apparel and home and garden where you saw things like linens and things and some of the bigger guys kind of have problems. Um, there's a lot of opportunity now for online. Cool, cool. All right, let's talk about, I mean, since we're talking about growth, I mean, astronomical growth to me in the Amazon marketplace. Why? Yeah, so, so for our customers, Amazon's growing at about 70% year over year. When Amazon reports their numbers, they're growing at 45% year over year. And when we compare that to e-commerce at 15%, they're growing anywhere from three to five times faster than e-commerce. Uh, we attribute that to two things. Number one is selection. Uh, Amazon, because of the third-party system with, with sellers on Amazon, um, they have pretty much everything you're looking for. The other thing is Amazon realized around 2005 that the one thing consumers really respond to is free or very very reduced shipping and handling. So that's when they started doing things like Super Saver. It started at like 100 bucks, and now they've moved it all the way to 25 Then they introduced Prime, and that's very, very popular, where you spend about 80 bucks and then you get free two-day shipping on all you can eat. Um, so consumers really like that. A lot of people feel like Amazon's going to make that essentially free over time. They've made it free for students uh, and moms that, that join into this diaper kind of subscription program. So they're experimenting with that being free. So that's going to be interesting to see. You know, it could be a year we could see kind of the standard is free two-day shipping. Yeah. So, so that has a lot of wow. implications for everyone to kind of get their head around. Yeah, that. how do you get your head around that one? Because Amazon really does, to me, at some level, drive the online experience. Mm -hmm. And if they're doing free, I just noticed uh, uh, another uh, large retailer, I can't remember, it's a clothing, I can't remember which one, but they're, you know, advertising they're free, Walmart did free. Yeah, I think that was L.L. Bean that went L. L. free. L.L. Bean, right, yeah. just free, and it's yeah. like, okay, this is becoming part of the nomenclature when you're talking about online shopping. Yeah, it, it, it's hard for the small retailer um, because what you have to do is you don't have the scale, right? You don't have the scale of efficiency of a warehouse and, and you can't go and negotiate the top rates with FedEx and whatnot because you're just not doing the volume. So, so you see a couple of approaches. I think this is really what's driving eBay to acquire uh, they acquired GSI Commerce, which has seven distribution centers. Mm -hmm. So I think eBay is, is feeling that pain and trying to help sellers, and they're going to come out with a fulfillment by eBay-like offering to, to try to get sellers to um, use their, their shipping capacity, and, and hopefully they'll pass some of those savings on to consumers. eBay doesn't have a great history of doing that, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. What a, I mean, now, uh, do you, I, I noticed that they said that they're going to sell off 
you know, most of the uh, e-commerce portions of it. So right. if they do that part, I guess then that would only leave what? Yes, yeah, so, only so, leave a couple so, of things. So GSI has this like direct business as well. So they have um, Football Fanatics, Rue La La, where they're actually the retailer. Right. Um, and then there's part of the Dick Sporting Goods and Sports Authority where they actually own the inventory. So that's the part that's leaving. And, and eBay's doing that because they want to keep this clean image that they don't compete with, okay. with okay. retailers. Got it. Um, and that's kind of their play against Amazon. Is they, they're telling everyone, Amazon competes with you. We don't. We never will. Look, we bought this thing and didn't even take these pieces. Okay. So so I think that's kind of what they're doing. Oh, it does okay. leave them with the, the e-commerce and the distribution centers. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I, I read somewhere else, too. I don't know if you heard that. But, they, I mean, like you said, the PayPal thing is really possibly a big boom for them, not just online PayPal, but also in store. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to, um, you know, all the GSI cl clients I mentioned obviously have a lot of stores, so I think they'll try to put PayPal in the stores, do Toys R Us and all that kind of stuff. Big. Yeah. That could be pretty big. That could be pretty big. GSI Commerce, they provide the e-commerce, the, the platform, the site, as well as the um, the shipping, the actual fulfillment, and call center for about 40 of the largest retailers. Mm -hmm. um, Toys R Us, Radio Shack, Ace Hardware, Sports Authority, Dick Sporting Goods are, are kind of the top five okay. that okay. you've probably heard of. Um, and then they have some some uh, kind of apparel guys and a couple other folks from there. Um, so, you know, I think number one, what we can say is it's going to be pretty clear that those, those people will be selling on eBay. Um, I think they'll try to push PayPal onto those people. Those are kind of obvious. Um, and the third, I think the biggest motivation is Amazon, if you think about it, they're growing at 45%. So uh, then eBay's growing at 5%. And eBay is really trying to close that gap. eBay is really trying to close, grow as fast as e-commerce at 15%. And then, you know, then you have Amazon growing at 45%. So eBay's under a lot of pressure from mm. shareholders, the market, the sellers, everyone, uh, to grow faster. Um, so I think this is a uh, somewhat of a, a, an initiative to try to do that. Um, so by big, bringing on these large, <laughs> so bringing on large merchants and pushing um, PayPal yeah, and pushing PayPal, and then also um, you know kind of implementing some kind of fulfillment system for smaller sellers. So you do to, think that will be? I think so. They, part they've been of the kind package. of hazy on that, but yeah. I, I think that they get a lot of pressure from fulfillment by Amazon, and they see that as very successful for Amazon and one of the drivers of growth. So, so you know, those are the things to keep an eye on. Why is eBay so far behind now? Why are they so far behind? Well, um, you've been on, you know, I think you've been doing eBay as long as I have, and um, you went through that period of time there, kind of the end of the Meg Whitman regime, where the, the train just didn't have a driver, you know, and, and I think um, when you're when you're in a space that's going 100 miles an hour and you have your foot off the gas for three years, um, it takes more than three years to catch up because you got to kind of get velocity to get, you know, the, the space isn't slowing down and, and mm -hmm. it takes a long time to catch up. So, so I think they're going to be playing catch up for another 10 years or so. Wow. So it's going to take a long time. So the velocity is just not like And I think that's why they're doing yeah. these acquisitions to try to really you know, they realize they're like, gosh, this is going so slow. We need to really okay. do something to speed this That was up. the thing you said yesterday. Okay. <laughs> what about this acquisition? You said acquisitions that sometimes don't make sense. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel like they're doing that? Well, one way of looking at it uh -huh. is, uh, all right, you have $2.4 billion. Do you spend that on, like, fulfillment and stuff like that? Or do you spend it on bringing more buyers? At the end of the day, the best way to help sellers is bringing more buyers. And I, I still worry that... The eBay buying experience is not moving forward very quickly, and I don't think any of these acquisitions they've done are really helping. So, so I Good think point. you know, I would love to go see them go buy some search technology or do a big Good point. paid Google two billion dollars to come fix just, their search. Just fix my search. Just fix my search. That would poss probably have bigger results than. I want to just talk about okay, um, mobile, mm -hmm. and um, what your guys are seeing in the mobile area arena adoption. How is that? coming in and they're coming in like gangbusters. Yeah, there, there's a lot of data points out there. You, you see Google saying that about 30% of their searches they're seeing now are, are um, local in nature. Um, we don't see that translating into commerce quite yet at that rate. We're seeing kind of in the 5 to 10% rate. Um, so okay. for example, Black Friday, um, a lot of reports say that last year of 2010, that it was about 6% of, of online traffic was mobile oriented. So, you know, not quite 10% there, but, you know, I think this next Christmas we'll see it get kind of 10 to 12%. So our recommendation to retailers is 
don't go out and spend a ton of money on an application. We've seen a lot of retailers do that, and it kind of is hard to get um, usage from that with consumers. Make sure your site is mobile friendly. Um, make sure you have things on there like a phone number and just the basic kind of things that people can order from your, your, your site. From The two mobile devices we recommend retailers look at are the iPhone um, system with mm -hmm. Safari uh, yeah. and, then the, and Android, Android with Chrome. <laughs> so, so you got to, you know, I think those are the two main ones and everything else. If you can get it to work there, it'll work pretty much on all the other okay. mobile devices. I don't okay. think old school, you know, flips and stuff like that are important. Well, so Blackberry, some people go Blackberry. Blackberry, I mean, Blackberry kind of, yeah, yeah, the new browsers on the Blackberry are, are if you do uh, the iPhone and Android, it'll work pretty it'll well. It'll work good. Okay. Yeah. So I think um, those are the top three, definitely. Yeah. And then once you do that, making sure that you're sending your product catalog to these comparison shopping engines that are on okay. the mobile devices, like Red Laser, which eBay acquired, um, Shop Savvy, uh, and then also the Google Shopper. So, so the use cases, consumers are out there scanning products and barcodes, uh, and you want to make sure your products can be seen. Okay. So, so sort of like if I want to get into this, there's other angles other than me developing and spending all the money. Get on some of the channels that are already doing a little bit of the mobile thing. Yeah, you yeah, you'll just get pulled right along as consumers start to do this. Okay. All right. Let me ask you about Google and these changes that you even alluded to yesterday and how they're showing more product in their searches and uh, definitely in their ads. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, Google has made um, all kinds of changes. They, had, they changed the algorithm, which hurt a lot of retailers. Um, I was told it's not Panda, it's Pondo, which is the name of the engineer that wrote it. So I learned something every, every okay, day. It's it's Pondo. Pondo. <laughs> okay. So Panda, um, or sometimes I call it the farmer, farmer release. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so we've seen some some retailers have be negative impacted, some positively, because what they did is they tried to take it's all, almost like eBay's deduplication kind of process. Okay. They're trying to get rid of that duplicate content out there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing on the SEO front. Um, on the paid side, we are seeing a couple of, of what used to be experiments, uh, which is Google's fancy name for beta, um, have now become mainstream. One of them is called Google Product Listing Ads, and that's where you've probably seen it over on the right-hand side. You'll see a couple of product images with pricing and whatnot. Um, that's doing really well. It's still a CPC program, um, but it converts very well, and the, the cost per click is typically a little bit lower right now than the sponsored text links. So um, they've opened that to retailers, and we're encouraging everyone to experiment with that. Another one is product extensions, where you have this little plus box that will expand down, and you can see products. That works okay. It's just not as visible as the two that are over on the right-hand side. Um, How does that work? Is that something you have to sign up for, for the extensions? Of yeah, you have to be in paid search, and okay. you have to be sending them a feed. Um, most people are already sending them a right, feed because right, Google right. product search is free. So you need to sign up for paid search, and then there, there's a way to connect your accounts. And, and when you do that, Google will automatically start to populate those with the feed that you're sending them. Gotcha. Yep. And, at Advisor, we, we help retailers really optimize that feed, which is really important. It, it's important for the free part, which is Google product search, mm -hmm. um, but now that it's driving the paid search, retailers need to pay a lot more attention to their data feeds and make sure they're of the highest quality and up-to-date and that kind of thing. Well, since you alluded to it, I mean, you, know, you, you guys just came out with a new uh, piece for search. Yeah. for your customers. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and how that works with Google? Yeah, so, so text ads are still the primary driver on Google, mm -hmm. so, you know, sponsored listings. Um, what retailers struggle with is coming up with all the keywords. So, uh, you know, let, let's use you as an example. Let's say you're selling some, um, give me an example of a top shoe seller. Laces. Some, some, <laughs> you know. know. Shoelaces. I don't know. Some, Bandana. I don't know. You know, some <laughs> branded shoelace, maybe it has a celebrity thing on there or something, you know, mm -hmm. like let's say a, uh, a Jay-Z shoelace. <laughs> and uh, so. Which we want, Jay. Just send it over. Yeah. <laughs> and be, we might as well get the Beyonce. Beyonce. All right. Hey, come on. For the money. Yeah, okay. there you go. Uh, Anyway, so let's say you have something like that, and let's say you have red, blue, and black, and maybe you have different sizes. Mm -hmm. of, I don't know, the, like 30 inch and 40 inch, let's right, say. Right. Well, well, going out um, and buying all the right keywords for that are tricky. Um, so we have a system called Inventory Driven Search, where what we do is we look at your data feed, and you can go and say, all right, I want to, for shoelaces, I want to run a program that includes any kind of celebrity endorsement, the color of the shoelace, and the length. And we'll go out and populate those keywords with your products on Google, you can even put the price in there, then we automatically synchronize that over time. So if you go out of stock, we'll pause those for you. Um, if you um, if your price changes, we'll update that. If you have any promotions like free shipping or anything like that, we'll make sure those are reflected appropriately. Oh, cool. So it's what it does is it allows the retailer to get into this, what's called the long tail of search, 
um, which can be very manual and painful, mm -hmm. we automate it all for you. So it does it kind of almost in real time, if I change this price inside of Channel Advisor, yep. it's going to actually push that out to the Google feeds yep. for my Or you get some new m and laces in, uh -huh. boom, we'll put those up there as oh, well. Okay. So, so, okay. Or some of your things go, um, you stop carrying them, we just will take that down. So, okay. So it's kind of like this real time connection between your inventory and, and Google Ads. Awesome. That's pretty cool. I like that. Let's talk about Groupon versus daily deals. Okay. I don't even know if it's a versus, but can you tell me what is your thing on this deal of the day kind of uh, a feel and how that is interacting with e-commerce? Yeah, so so today, um, for a while, it didn't have anything to do with e-commerce. So these daily deals, right. I'm sure you have them in Atlanta, they're big here. Um, and what's funny is you kind of get Groupon as the first one, and then you have like 15 others that come pretty quickly. And generally what they're offering is half off of a service that's local, like right. a massage or a restaurant or something like that. Um, I just got one today for a local belly dancing class. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, you're going to take that right yeah, I, Oh, oh yeah, the targeting was spot on. on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so a lot of retailers are kind of like, all right, this is interesting, but it doesn't really apply to us. Well, Groupon did a test with Gap um, and did a $50 gift card for Gap.com or for the store for $25. Um, and they sold about 400,000 of those. And then more recently, you've seen Amazon do Living Social, um, and then eBay did Groupon. So you're starting to see some of the e-commerce guys play around with it, mostly at the gift card level. But, but Groupon has also announced kind of a um, just a anytime deals versus just the daily deals, which has more of a 10% business model. Um, the, the normal Groupon business model is you have to have 50% off and pay Groupon 30%, so it's effectively an 80% revenue share, which is way too rich for yeah, any that's e-commerce. Big. Yeah, that's big. Um, but now they're talking about maybe a 10%, and then you have like a little bit off on there. So this starts to get more into to our world. So you know we think there is a chance that some of these daily deal sites kind of have a part of them that are more of a channel for normal e-commerce. So, yeah. so we're keeping a close eye on that to see how that develops. You also have, so you have Groupon and Living Social are the two big guys right now. Right. You also have Facebook and Google have announced their own kind of local deal platforms. Um, so, you know, I think they'll initially go after that local 50% off business, right. but over time, um, they may try to differentiate with more national offers, which would appeal to, to e-commerce providers. That'll be interesting. Yeah. That'll be very interesting. Okay, let's get down to, um, and, I, and I hear it in the hallways just before we got started, a gentleman came up to you and asked you about check out yep. on eBay. What do you know? Because I know you're in the back rooms, man. I know you know stuff. <laughs> I know you know something. No, I'm teasing. But what, what's, what's going on there, man? Uh, so, so eBay is rolling out. Um, they're doing a couple things. They're, they're trying to get to the part, point where they have a cart. Um, so to get there, they're getting rid of third-party checkout, and they're forcing all sellers to use their checkout by June. So um, we've been working closely with them to transition everyone over to that. Uh, it's gone pretty smoothly. There, there's some decreased functionality that some sellers experience because we've, we've got a lot more shipping options and combined promotional activities and zero use coupons, things like that that just eBay doesn't have. So, you know, unfortunately, there, there is a little bit of loss of functionality there. Uh, that being said, you know, eBay is very bullish on this cart that they have coming out that it's going to really increase people's sales. Um, I think they, they're, the messaging is a little kind of confused right now, and a lot of sellers are getting mixed messages from eBay about it. So um, Todd's going to be talking tomorrow, so hopefully he'll clear all that up and uh, yeah. everyone can kind of get their heads around it. Okay, um, who is, I mean, now with all the changes in e-commerce and all the changes, you guys went through a lot of changes in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, how, how's your customer base, what, it, what's the focus now in terms of who is a good customer for Channel Live? We, we've always had um, customers that have already ramped up on e-commerce. So... We just aren't designed to be your, you know, the first place that people go for e-commerce. So there, there's lots of things out there that are better, like maybe a Yahoo store or just starting to sell on eBay or Amazon yourself. Um, generally, where, where customers come to us is when they've hit kind of this $25,000 a month kind of level of growth, um, and they want to take it to the next level. That's really our sweet spot from there all the way up to the Walmarts and Dells of the world. Um, and the reason why is at that point, you've kind of figured out a lot of the unknowns of e-commerce. You, you're able to source product, you know who your buyers are typically, you're able to fulfill product, and so you've solved a lot of the hard problems and now you're really ready to take it to the next level and really start scaling. That that's has been our ideal customer pretty much since we started the company and still is today. Okay. Um, and part of the fun of Channel Advisor is we have about you know over 3,000 customers, 200 of them are these large brand name 
folks and they're fun to talk to and they have their own challenges. They're usually kind of fighting internal battles and things. And then the other, you know, several thousand are entrepreneurs like yourself that, you know, they're out there every day rolling up their sleeves, dealing with issues and looking to grow their business. So what's, what's the focus now? E-commerce 2011, what should we be focusing on as e-commerce merchants? What, what, what should we look at? It kind of depends. Um, if you want to really grow your business this year, then I think doubling down on search is important, making sure you're doing that, comparison shopping in marketplaces like eBay and Amazon. Okay. That, that's going to help you grow your business this year. If you're looking at the next two or three years, we're really excited about Facebook. Um, if you look at social, Twitter's out there doing well, not a lot of selling going on Twitter. Uh, you know, I've been to one of your talks and you have that Dell diagram. It's kind of like, you know, they're selling five million bucks and then it's like this little tiny little slice. Yeah, it's a slip 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so I think Twitter, the, the jury's still out on it. But mm -hmm. for Facebook, I think they are investing a lot in what we call Facebook commerce. We just kicked off a blog to help retailers navigate this um, called Facebook Commerce Strategies. Um, we've got an index up dot there. Com. Dot com. Facebook yeah. com. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook what? Uh, commerce Strategies. Dot com. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and on there, we've got a couple things we're putting out. Number one is an index every month of the top retailers and how their fan pages are doing, who are the top growers and why, and some best practices there. Okay. Um, another one is uh, here at the conference, we just talked about a framework for, for thinking about Facebook commerce. And we, we've, we've identified seven opportunities for retailers to look at um, and uh, encourage your listeners to, to go and, and check that out. Yeah, we'll definitely make sure they go over there and get it. You're the master of Facebook, so uh, we'll, we'll definitely have to yeah, whatever. leverage your knowledge. <laughs> Scott, thank you so much. Thank dude. you. You well, always do great things. Yeah, enjoyed our, our fireside chat. There, yeah, yeah, we got to do another one again. Let's get right. let's get together in Australia and do one. Absolutely. Cool? All right. All right thank you. How's that?